I want to thank all of you for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us for this webinar on Chapter 570, which is MHDO's Uniform Reporting System for Prescription Drug Price Data Set Rule. We want to walk through the requirements for 2021, and I just want to take a minute to reflect on uh, the fact that this is our second year, and I want to thank all of you for your compliance with these requirements in year one. Um, I know it's difficult when there are new uh, mandates and reporting requirements uh, in good times, uh, let alone when you're dealing with a pandemic. So uh, we appreciate uh, your efforts and uh, all of your uh, work to, to help uh, adhere to these requirements. So thank you. So with that said, uh, this webinar is scheduled for an hour. I don't think it'll take that long, um, but we will stay. Uh, if folks have questions. I also do want to point out that um, your phones have been muted. Um, please submit questions via the webinar chat feature, and we will address as many of these questions as possible uh, on this call. And for those questions that we need to think a little bit more about, we will uh, respond in our written FAQ that we post into the portal. And a recording of the webinar will be distributed after uh, this session uh, or shortly after the session and um, we'll post it on the MHDO website as well if, if you want to forward this to colleagues. With me, I've got some of my colleagues, uh, Philippe Banu, who is our compliance officer uh, with MHDO, Leanne Candora and Kate Mullins, who work with our data vendor, HSRI. Uh, they are joining us as well. So just quickly, uh, we wanna go through the agenda um, and then we'll get into the substance of the discussion after a brief introduction to what the requirement is, just to level set. Um, and then I'll turn it over to Kate Mullins uh, with HSRI and she'll walk through the specific uh, requirements and the implementation timeline, uh, the resources and technical support that are open and then we'll address questions that are in the chat. Okay, so for those of you that may be new to this, um, and for those of you that are not, just a reminder that the Maine Health Data Organization is a state entity um, in the state of Maine, and we're required by Maine state law to collect data from prescription drug manufacturers, wholesale drug distributors, and pharmacy benefit managers, uh, as described in the rule that governs all of this, which is technically called 90-590 chapter 570. A copy of that rule is found in the link that's presented in the slide. And I think there was just a chat that came in about whether or not these slides can be made available and we will post them uh, so that you will uh, have access to them. And as I mentioned just a, a minute ago, our data vendor is Human Service Research Institute, uh, HSRI, and they partner with NORC at the University of Chicago. And together they support our data submission and warehousing activities. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Kate Mullins who will walk through uh, the registration and notification requirements uh, section one or part one, and then the pricing component data submission is part two. Great, thanks, Carolyn. So as Carolyn noted, we're just gonna quickly give a reminder of what some of the requirements are associated with 570 for those of you that participated in all of this work last year. Um, and for anyone who's new, um, just again, doing a level set on kind of what the requirements are of chapter 570. So we've um, sort of broken it out into two parts. Part one requirements includes uh, the registration by all reporting entities, and that must be completed by January 30th of each year. Notifications by manufacturers must also be completed by January 30th of each year. And then the second sort of part two requirements of the rule includes the um, MHDO notifications for pricing component data. And that's a, a, a piece of this work that is completed by MHDO and HSRI. We produce um, some information about what is being requested by February 15th of each year. And then submission of those pricing component data must be completed by April 15th of, this, of each year. These 
Deadlines are um, slightly different from, from what happened last year in the initial year. So um, these will be the new deadlines for 2021 and all years to come. So again, action is required by January 30th of 2021. We're asking all entities to log in and review and update the summary and user information in the MHGO prescription drug price data portal. Wholesale and drug distribu wholesale drug distributors and PBMs, um, updating your registration is the only requirement requ uh, at this time that's due by January 30th. If your organization was not registered in 2020 or you need help with your user account, our help desk, the MHGO help desk is available to support you um, to get your user accounts um, reset or um, get you pre-registered if your entity was not registered last year. So in addition to the registration, um, if your organization is a manufacturer no later than January 30th of each year, um, you must notify the MHGO via the portal whether the manufacturer has had an, an increased um, wholesale acquisition cost of a brand name drug by more than 20% per pricing unit, whether there's been an increase in the wholesale acquisition cost of a generic drug that costs at least $10 per pricing unit by more than 20% per pricing unit, or if you introduced a new prescription drug for distribution in the state when the wholesale acquisition cost is greater than the amount that would have, it would cause, um, cause a drug to be considered a specialty drug under Medicare Part D. And these thresholds that are listed out here are included um, come directly from the language in, in chapter 570. Um, so manufacturers will need to log into the portal and indicate whether or not any of their business met these thresholds during the previous calendar year. So the time frame for these January 2021 20, notifications um, will be for the previous calendar year. So 2020 data will be reported during this year. Again, this is a slight adjustment to those of you who are manufacturers and participated last year. The reporting period was much shorter um, because of the implementation date of this rule. We were only asking for um, information in a, a short, uh, I think it was about a little over two and a half months of, of um, was covered in that reporting period. But this year, we're asking you to report on the entire 2020 calendar year. So part two, the notifications for pricing component data, this applies to all entities. So on or before February 15th of each year, including 2021, the MHGO will notify you via email whether or not you are required to um, report on information uh, for particular NDCs. That notification will be sent out via our um, automated portal email notifications that, and again, it will come to you on or before February 15th. So again, just um, going back to the, um, once you receive those notifications, the information, you'll be asked to, again, all three entity types, prescription drug manufacturers, wholesale drug distributors, and pharmacy benefit managers must report on those, uh, the pricing component data to uh, MHGO no later than 60 days after notification from MHGO. And in that case, it'll mean April 15th of 2021 this year. So again, manufacturers are required to um, provide additional pricing component data on any of the specific uh, drugs where they should have notified MHGO for meeting any of the three thresholds. An increase um, for a brand name drug by more than 20% per pricing unit, an increase in a wholesale acquisition costs of a generic drug that costs at least $10 per pricing unit by more than 20% per pricing unit, or if there was a, a new drug introduced. 
for wholesale distributors and pharmacy benefit managers, the um, selection of which NDCs will be asking you to provide pricing component data on um, will be based on three categories, price increase, new drugs, or um, whether the NDC um, appeared on at least two of the lists of the top 25 most costly, most utilized, or most and or represent the highest year over year increaser, increases for mainers. Again, this is going to reflect the methodology that was used last year. Um, we'll be using that same methodology to determine the list of NDCs of interest and what we'll be asking folks to report on um, additional pricing component data. So once those uh, pre-populated templates are made available on February 15th, you'll log into the MHDO prescription drug price data portal to download those pre-populated templates. You'll complete those templates within your own environment and then submit those completed templates by April 15th of 2021 via the portal. Here, we just have a, an example of what the pre-populated Excel template looks like. Um, there's a um, there's one tab that just sort of walks through the requirements. It, it very closely matches what is in Chapter 570. And then there will be a second tab that um, has all of the fields for you to complete um, the requirements for each requested NDC. I'm gonna do a quick demo of what some of this looks like in the portal and what you need to complete. I'm gonna pull over that screen. Um, again, for those of you that participated in some of these requirements last year, this should all be very familiar, um, even though it's probably been a while since you logged in and have done some of this. Um, I also just wanna acknowledge a number of you have already completed these registration and notification steps. We really appreciate you being proactive um, and, and getting some of that work done. And then for those of you that are new to this process, um, well, again, we'll just give you a little, a quick walkthrough. And, and after I go through this walkthrough, I'll also talk about sort of some of the resources and help that's available if you do run into issues. Okay. So I'm logged into the, the MHDL prescription drug price data portal and I'm logged in as a, a demonstration manufacturer. So when I log in to the homepage, you'll see we have um, some information right in front of you just to, about the status of your 2021 annual registration. There are three components um, as a manufacturer. You need to complete your summary, notifications, and user updates. If you're a um, wholesale distributor or PBM, you'll just be required to do the summary and the users. This screen's telling me that all three components are incomplete and that I need to get those done. We also have a section on this homepage called system messages. This is where we're gonna post reminders about upcoming deadlines or other information um, that we're distributing out to you. So now that I'm logged in, I know I need to get through these things. I'm gonna take a look at, first I'm gonna go to my summary screen. And this is where we just display information about the entity itself, um, the information about the tax ID, the name, the type, um, and of course, some, some address information. Um, in order to, to complete the registration, I'm gonna click the Confirm 2021 Registration Update link. I'm gonna review this information. Um, and if something needs to be changed, I can go ahead and edit it. Uh, if it doesn't need to be changed, I can just go down to the bottom and click the confirm 2021 registration button. I now see that my summary component of my registration process is, is complete. Next, I'm going to go to users. And again, I'm going to go to the confirm registration update link because I've reviewed that information um, in terms of who the existing users are, confirmed that they're, they're existing users. If I needed to add someone new, I certainly can by adding a new user and selecting the roles that they'll have. We need a user role. Each of these user roles needs to be assigned to at least one user. Um, 
a particular user can have a dish, have uh, multiple roles assigned to them. Our um, user manual, um, that I'll go through in a minute, does provide definitions for each of these user roles as well. I'm going to go back to my home screen, and I can see now that I have completed my user's requirements. Because I'm a manufacturer, I have one more step to, to take. I'm going to click on notifications. Again, click the confirm button. And this is where we're um, asking you to provide some information about those three thresholds and whether or not um, any of those were met in the previous calendar year. So um, each of the questions is, is well, each of the, the, the thresholds is stated here, um, defaulting to, the, to no. If you did meet one of these requirements, one of these thresholds, you'll toggle to yes and ask to be enter the NDCs that are applicable. To that threshold, you can add additional lines if there are multiple NDCs um, that met this threshold. And, uh, again, and also if you if you didn't meet any of these thresholds in the previous year, you can leave these all to no. And again, just need to confirm that the information you put in here is accurate. And now I'm showing that I've completed all three of my requirements for the annual registration updates. And again, um, once you get through these by January 30th of 2021, that's it for now. You're then gonna just wait until February 15th for us to notify you that the pricing component data templates are available. I am gonna just quickly walk through what that's gonna look like. Um, but again, you'll get a prompt via email when it is time to do that. So February 15th, I get an email saying, that my templates are available with pre-populated NDCs that I need to report on. If I go to the templates menu, I see that I've got two available here. Um, I'm gonna click download. It's gonna download it to my computer and then I'm gonna work offline in my own environment completing those templates. Um, and once that is complete, I'm gonna go to submissions. I can submit a file. I'm gonna to choose to upload the file. It's gonna check the file name. Um, we need you to, to keep the file name um, as it was when you downloaded it. It's especially important that the FEIN number it remains intact. Um, and then you can upload it and see that it was successful. I'm just gonna quickly also show you some of the other resources available. Um, here in the portal, we have a contact us screen that tells you how to get in touch with the MHGO help desk via email or phone number, and then also information about um, if you do need to contact MHGO directly about um, compliance or assessments, we have some information here. Additionally, we also have a user manual available in the portal. Um, this is a good resource uh, if this is the first time you're making use of this portal um, and completing these requirements. The user manual will walk you through some of those steps. We also have an FAQ document that walks through a number of questions and answers that came up during the last year as people were completing these requirements. That document will continue to be maintained, um, especially after today, if there are questions that come up um, that we wanna add to that resource. So again, those are two um, documents and resources that are available to you um, via the portal. And then also our help desk is available to support you in working through these steps. All right, so I'm gonna jump back to the presentation here. And again, just, just wanna go through the timeline one more time all in one place. Um, the, 2021 registration must be completed by the end of this month. Uh, by January 30th is the deadline. We will be sending out reminders to folks um, as a, that date approaches, just making sure um, everybody's taking the time to, to go in and complete those requirements. Additionally, manufacturers must complete the 2021 notifications regarding um, new drugs or those with, with price increases again, by January 30th. We had a webinar today to walk through all the requirements and we'll, we'll have some time at the end to answer questions. 
On February 15th, manufacturers, wholesale distributors, and PBMs will receive an email um, from us through the portal announcing that pre-populated pricing component data templates are available to download from the portal with the specific NDCs for which reporting is required. Completing pricing component data templates will then be due by April 15th of 2021. Again, a couple of resources available. Um, the MHGO website, as we said, has the Chapter 570 rule available on it, and then a link to the MHGO prescription drug price data portal. And again, um, technical support is available via our um, help desk or um, resources at MHGO. And I see that a number of questions have come in through the chat feature. So I'm gonna take a minute to try and get through some of those. Um, and if there are things that come up um, that we're not able to answer today, or if you wanna send us a question um, to the help desk after today, you think of something, um, we'll work on making questions and answers available in the FAQ as well. So I'm just gonna pause a moment and read through some of these questions and see if we can address them. Um, one question, are vendors permitted or able to register manufacturers on their behalf or must the manufacturer register themselves? We've been working with a number of um, vendors who are um, completing some of these requirements on the behalf of a manufacturer. So that's something we can we can work with you on. Uh, again, feel free to reach out to our help desk and we can work with you through the logistics of that. Um, okay. Do manufacturers still have to submit blank reports if none of the thresholds are met? Um, so manufacturers need to complete, if you did not, if none of your products met, any of the thresholds in 2020, we will need you to go in and complete the notifications um, section indicating that um, none of those thresholds are met. So you just answer no. Um, and then you, we will be double checking and um, notify you on February 15th, whether there's something we found that we need you to report on pricing component data to. Um, and that would be communicated through the portal. And if, it, you would only receive a template if there is a pre-populated NDC. Um, so if, if that hasn't addressed the question, if you have a specific um, use case, we can certainly take this offline and, and walk through that as well. Um, somebody asked just about providing the help desk email again. Let me just go back to that um, screens or just to make sure everybody has that handy. Here it is, mhgo help at hsri.org. Um, one other uh, thing to note, um, I was just reminded by my, my colleague, Philippe, um, the automated email address that we send notifications out from, so portal at mhgo.main.gov, that is a unmonitored address. Um, so you cannot reply to that address. All replies need to come through our help desk um, and we'll, we'll make sure we're getting those addressed. You should be warned. Um, we, we try and remind everybody about that unmonitored email address. Um, I just wanted to, to state it here as well. I, I'm seeing a couple questions. Um, I think we may need to take offline. Just uh, what about new drugs approved with a BLA? Do manufacturers need to report? Um, do biosimilars with regulatory pathways of 351K require reporting? I think we're gonna take those two offline um, and we'll respond in writing. Um, can multiple individuals be attributed to each user type? For example, two different individuals serving as administrators. Yes, you can have as many um, users assigned to uh, the various roles. 
um, just a confirmation, submissions will only be needed, submissions of pricing component data will only need to be completed if requested by MHGO. That's correct. Um, and then just again, a confirmation as a manufacturer, if I check yes under the notifications for the thresholds, you don't need to report anything else at this time. You'll still need to just wait for the pre-populated template notice on February 15th and then complete it by April 15th. Um, let's see. There's a question, does a manufacturer um, that has not previously reported to the state of Maine need to submit an initial drug price WAC file? Um, I believe the answer is no to that. We're just, we're just gonna be asking you to um, complete those notifications to indicate if you met any of those thresholds, and then we'll be reaching out to you um, in February if additional pricing component data is needed. Okay, if a manufacturer has not been registered in the past, what are your next steps? Um, if you are believe your, your manufacturer organization is a new entity to us, you should reach out to our help desk. They'll ask you a couple of questions and we'll get you pre-registered in the portal. And then um, you'll be able to go in and complete the steps we've reviewed today. If a wholesaler does not distribute any of the NDCs on the provided list, do we indicate as such? Yes. Um, if as a wholesaler you receive um, a pre-populated template with all NDCs that you know you, you don't actually distribute, um, there's a, a place to indicate that in the, the template, but we still need you to do that and submit the completed template. Um, somebody's asking, saying they completed the summary notifications and user sections last week. However, when clicking on templates, they do not see any files to download. You should not see any templates to download yet. That will not happen until February 15th. We will send out an email notification when those templates are complete. So if you've done your summary notifications and users work um, and confirmations, you're all set. For now, you will not be required to do anything else until February 15th. So will the notification on 215 come via email or a posting in the portal? We'll do both. Um, there will be an email notification that goes out directly to the users of uh, each entity notifying them that the templates are available. We'll also um, post a notification in the portal, just alerting you that that has um, that step has been completed and you can check to see if the template's available. Um, just reading through, I think I see a couple other questions we may wanna take offline um, and respond to in writing. I'll just pause too, if any of my, my other colleagues see questions that they want to answer right now, please feel free to jump in as I continue to read some of these. Um, one question, do you need to be listed as, as an administrator user in order to edit and update the summary user and notification section of the portal? Yes, you need to be an administrator user to complete those requirements. Um, I see a question just about um, 
during, I think, the, the notification completion for manufacturers, can you upload multiple NDC numbers instead of indi individually typing? We didn't, the portal does not currently have that functionality. Um, we, we can certainly um, discuss options if you have a rather large list. Um, please feel free to reach out to the help desk and we can see what we can do to, to help with that. Um, I don't, Karen Lee, would you be able to address, um, there are some questions maybe just about when uh, the annual assessment will occur. That will be later this year, right? There's nothing, no action required at this time. Um, I think that's right. Um, we will be sending out a separate notification regarding that assessment. And I think the question was, is it, is it something, is it annual or is it a one-time assessment? And the answer is it is an annual assessment. So each year we will um, invoice and expect payment uh, as required under the statute. Okay, so I see, I, I know I have not addressed all the questions. I do see some additional ones that I think, um, as I said, we'll, we're gonna take offline and respond to in writing. Um, and that'll be in the form of updates to the FAQs. Um, we do have your names as well. And, I'll, and feel free, um, again, if there's something that comes up after we hang up this call, uh, feel free to reach out to our help desk um, and we will get responses to you um, as quickly as possible. And Kate, you may have you may have answered this. Um, I noticed one of the questions was, "Will this information be available for download?" Thank you. Yep. Um, so yes. So today we've recorded this webinar, um, and we will be sending around a uh, link once we've made it available um, on the MHD website for you all to review or pass on to any of your colleagues. That should happen within the next couple of days. All right. So, Kate, thank you very much. Lots of good questions. Um, and obviously, some questions that are a little more detailed than um, uh, that we'll need, as Kate said, to take back and just um, think through it and get you out a response. Um, I would say we will shoot to have responses out um, next week. So, uh, I think that concludes our session for today. Uh, again, I want to thank everybody for taking time to, to uh, join us. Um, as we've learned in the, in, in the first year, there's a lot of complexity and different scenarios. Um, so keep sending the questions to us. Uh, and hopefully we're figuring this all out together. Um, Again, I know this is a challenging times on a lot of different levels. So very much appreciate your attention to these requirements and um, look forward to working with you in this new year. All right, thanks everybody. Thank you.